Welcome to my kitchen. You know, getting healthy and healthy cooking doesn't mean we can't have something sweet. Today we're going to make a dish that will make your mouth water and will satisfy even the sweetest tooth, my mixed berry crisp. Berries are just nutrition-packed jewels of nature, rich in vitamin C, potassium, dietary fiber, and many, many protective phytonutrients. We often think of berries as grandma's berry pie or even the smoothies of today that are just packed with sugar. The mixed berry crisp we're going to make today has no added sugar. That's right, no table sugar in my dishes. Wow. Let's get started. Now, I find that six cups of berries works great. And you can mix whatever you can find, whatever's in season. Blueberries, blackberries, strawberries, raspberries. I use three cups strawberries, two cups blueberries, and one cup raspberries for mine today. Now, a tip. To keep your strawberries from getting mushy during the baking process, Cut your tips off, just cut them in half. That's right, no need to slice them like that we do when our fresh dishes whenever we make berries or when you make strawberry pie you usually don't cook it as much so you want to slice them. So we just cut these in half, which is really a good tip. Also, if you can't find fresh and you want to use frozen berries, for instance, I go to the berry farm a lot in the summer, one of those, you know, the farms where you pick it yourself, and I'll love to get blackberries in season. I wash them and put them in the freezer for use throughout the year. So I may want to do some frozen berries for this dish, or I might even want to mix the two. So what you would do if you were using frozen berries, you'd put them in a large colander inside a mixing bowl like this one and let them thaw until they separate, not till they're all the way thawed out, but just until they separate. And that way the juices will drain out really good. You just have to make sure that um, the juices do drain or your dish will be too runny. Now, we're gonna start by getting a large mixing bowl and combine our berries. So we've got our strawberries and oh, they look good. The farmer's market did a good job this time. And our blueberries. Again, you know, it really doesn't matter the ratio, just about six cups of berries any way that you like to mix it or what you have on hand. I'm just going to mix these berries up and fold them in together. I find these rubber spatulas work really good because then my berries don't break apart as I'm mixing and working with them. Okay, that looks nice and mixed. So we're going to add, for our thickening agent, some tapioca. You can adjust the tapioca that you use according to uh, the water content of your berries. If you're using frozen berries, you might want to add a little more. And if you're using fresh, maybe a little less, just depending on your berries. We're just going to stir that to mix it up and coat them. Then here comes the trick of the day. For our sweetening agent, we're going to use some maple syrup. We use maple syrup and the different syrups a lot in healthy cooking as a sweetening agent. And this is not what you think of as the maple syrup on the pancake aisle at the grocery store. This is the real thing from the northeastern United States. If you live up near Maine or Vermont or one of those places, you're so lucky because you can go out and tap a tree and get your own maple syrup. It is just lovely. We drizzled that on there. Now we're just going to mix it gently just to coat it with the maple syrup. Then we're going to oil our baking dish. A medium-sized 8x8 eight eight or something of that nature works really good, and I find that the stoneware works the best, and if you don't have that, you could use glass, but I probably would not use a metal pan for this dish. So I'll get my olive oil, because that's the oil I like to cook with, and just coat my pan like that, and then we'll spread our berry mixture right into our prepared pan. I just like to pour them in there and then spread them about evenly. They just look so good and pretty, don't they? Mm. All those antioxidants and the luscious berries. Plus, especially in the middle of the winter time, it's such a treat to have fruit. That looks really good. We'll just set that aside and then we'll make our topping. You know, you think of the topping of a crisp as really good and crunchy and filled with sugar. Well, ours is really good and crunchy, but no sugar. Watch this. Okay. Let's start with a, a small mixing bowl. To that we'll put a couple of cups of oats. I like to use the rolled oats that you get in the natural food store in the bulk section. They're organic and they really have a good flavor to them. They taste a lot better than the oats that I can find in the grocery store, but those will work if that's what you have. So we'll have some oats. We're going to add a half a cup of flour. You can use whole wheat pastry flour 
or um, another type of flour like gluten-free flour. That's what I'm going to use today. It works really well. It's just kind of fun. And then if someone's gluten-free, it's just neat to do. We're going to kind of mix that just a little bit. Then we're going to add a little uh, fourth a teaspoon of sea salt. I like sea salt because it doesn't have the refined, uh, the, like the refined table salt with the additives in it that you get in the grocery store. So I like sea salt. And then a half teaspoon of cinnamon. Ooh, that smells good. So we're going to just kind of blend that a little bit to get that cinnamon and salt down in there. Then in another container, I just go ahead and use a measuring cup because it's easy instead of a bowl. You put a half a cup of oil, and then you're going to put in three tablespoons of maple syrup. So we'll take our maple syrup and just add it to our oil. I like to scrape it out and get every last bit because that's the good part. Okay, that just kind of mixes a little bit. And then we're just going to pour that right into our topping mixture, just like that. Now, when you make this at home, if it's a little bit dry, don't be afraid to add a teaspoon or so more of your oil, because depending on the weather and the conditions in your environment, it might end up being a little dry. And also the oats that you use make a difference as well. So if it tends to be a little bit too dry, just a little extra oil. And vice versa, if it tends to be too mushy, just put in a little more oatmeal. And that works just as good. This is about right. See how it's just really good and getting gooey? That's nice. That's going to come out really lovely when we bake it. Okay, now we're going to take this mixture and just spread it over our berries. So we'll come over here and just pour it over our berry dish. I get it all out and then I spread it around. Now, it doesn't have to cover it completely. Oh, that smells so good with that cinnamon and the maple syrup. Yum. Just kind of spread it out, and then you'll know that it's done when the juices pop up through these cracks. You're going to bake it for about 35 minutes or so on a 350 oven. It shouldn't take more than 40, but 30, 35 is just about perfect. That's spread out, and you know, just for extra good measure, I'm going to sprinkle it with a little cinnamon, because I just love that cinnamon, and it smells good while it's cooking. So we'll just sprinkle it with a little and pop it in the oven. Okay, I've got a nice hot oven down here. There we go. Now, I have a finished product to show you. Ooh, it smells good. In fact, it's been smelling so good while I've been cooking, I want to get it out. So we're going to bring that up here for you and show you what it looks like all done. Ooh, that looks good. Smells so good. Now, when you go to serve this, of course, you're going to want to remove it from the heat and let it cool for a while before you serve it, not only to thicken the filling, but um, so that it just tastes the best. And you know, it's even better the next day. So this is one of those things that you can have for a couple days. I like to serve mine with a little whipped cream with cinnamon sprinkled on it. Ooh, that's mouthwatering. Let's see what this turned out like. Ooh, it's nice. The juices are all just lovely. You can see that steam rising. Mmm. That is so good. You can serve it with topping, you know, anything that your family likes. I just like to use whipped cream. And when I make the whipped cream, it's just plain. But ooh, it's just lovely on it. My husband's going to love this one tonight. Then, for an extra special little treat, I'll take a pretty strawberry. Just put on the plate like that, and then I'll get my cinnamon, and we'll just sprinkle a little cinnamon right on top like that. Ooh, wasn't that beautiful? You can see that dish was simple. I think I should taste it. What do you think? Oh, my goodness. I'll just use the spoon and have a little bit because it's just too good to pass up. Mmm, 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 mmm. You've got to make this one. Not only was this simple, it's healthy and delicious and nutritious. I see it as a whole bowl full of antioxidants, which boosts our immune system and fights that free radical damage. This is where we put the discussions from the show into real life use. I just love exploring new dishes and new ways to keep my family healthy. 
We can have desserts, and there really are many healthy dessert options out there. For today's mixed berry recipe, go to www.yourhealthtv.com. Print it off and enjoy. Thank you for being with me today, and don't go away because we'll be right back for more.